But if I hit this button right here, it should start working. Yeah. Hey, welcome to the closing beat, everybody. There's there's no data over there. There's no data on the right. Did the stock market go up or down? We don't know. Welcome to the closing beat. Uh, today is Tuesday. We are financial advisors here at Jazz Wealth. Just you know, yeah, we throw it together at the last second. Appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Um, we are going to talk about the stock market here today, uh, and everything should be good now. Um, our wine and wealth last week we did. Uh, you know, we do a wine and wealth class for clients every week. Uh, the last week we talked about some of those fine print tax laws that you probably never heard of. And I got a lot of emails from people going, what? I didn't know that existed, but uh, we're going to definitely expand on that because I found that, you know, you, you like that. I like talking about things that help you get your mind wrapped around opportunity, right? That's our goal is to add value to your finances every day. Otherwise, you know, what are we doing? Uh, we've also got some fin tips videos. Those are free. You can check them out on YouTube. Uh, they are at one o'clock every single day. Today's video I did was uh, the specifics of that sneakiness that the Schwab intelligence portfolios played on you with your cash position. Uh, I don't know. You tell me. You, if you haven't seen it yet, you tell me. Was that was that just sneaky? Should that be illegal or what? But uh, they got busted by the SEC, and um, I don't know. I'm, I'm on the fence with that one. Uh, I think had they spelled it out that this is what they were going to do, I think they wouldn't have been in any trouble. But uh, they were making money off your dough, man, and they didn't tell you. And you were getting lower returns, which they they actually knew about. That was a tough one. Anyways, check it out. We don't have to go over that here today. Uh, a lot of good ones coming up this week. Uh, kind of a variable uh, topic of content there uh, in our FinTips videos. They're on our YouTube channel. Appreciate you guys watching. Uh, on the right-hand side of your page, you can see the stock market... Well, Wide range. Uh, let's go with this. Uh, there's no data over there either. Uh, so a wide range actually for the day. Very, very interesting there that ultimately we finished up kind of negative. It was a tug of war and nobody won, right? We're basically down just a little bit on the day because, hey, we got the Fed coming up, right? All eyes are on the Fed. One man, like I put in the title here, one man has control over what happens tomorrow. And here's a fun thing to think about. So this is how it went down. So there's now a 95% chance that they raise rates by 0.75% tomorrow, three quarters of a point, which would be known as a three rate hike decision. And uh, this was a sudden change. And I'm like, why was the sudden change? I did a little research into this. Um, this happened like instantly. It was really fascinating. Uh, there was a report from the Wall Street Journal. And the report from the Wall Street Journal, it was a long one, but I'll read off the one quote that changed everything today. It shows how much attention uh, investors pay. Here's the quote. He said, uh, last week's inflation report from the Labor Department showed a bigger jump in prices in May than officials had anticipated. On the surface, it doesn't, it, you know, it sounds like a normal quote, right? Well, immediately everybody goes, what do you, wait, whoa, a higher jump in prices in May than officials had anticipated. That means that whoever wrote this had some inside knowledge to what they were anticipating, right? Because the Fed doesn't speak about what they think about uh, the inflation numbers. So that means that he had an inside source, which is normal in the media industry. There's nothing wrong there. But it says that uh, basically he had that, in the, the, the guy that wrote the article, had that inside source. And so uh, since it's not talked about publicly there, that caused people to immediately adjust their assumptions for tomorrow. That one line, believe it or not, that one line, because he just maybe didn't think about the way he was typing it there, uh, that they had anticipated. Oh, key word there. So literally when that came out, uh, you go to the CME Fed Fund Futures. I'll maybe cover that a little bit later on a video tonight or something, but uh, that's what changed everything. So now tomorrow, there's a 95% chance that they're going to raise high, uh, interest rates by 0.75%, whereas just yesterday, it was a half a percent. That was what we were all thinking. So the bottom line is tomorrow, we're getting a half a percent or three quarter of a percent raise in interest rates. Um, and no matter what you think about it, that's where, we, that's where we stand at the moment. So the market was digesting that a little bit. Bonds moved to new highs. Um, kind of a wild one there. Anyways, uh, if we look at the S&P, we're down 21% year to date now. We're officially in a bear market. Uh, that's not news uh, for you. But the good news is that this was one of the fastest bear markets on record. The fastest was actually during COVID. Uh, but this one lasted 111 days. It took us down to 20% there. 
Now, yesterday I showed you, and previously I've showed you the average performance of the stock market one month after uh, hitting 20% down, just to show you that it is kind of wild, but ultimately the average is uh, positive to the upside with only a few times where the market was actually lower. Today, we go a little bit further. If you go three months out, uh, there's a 75% chance of being uh, positive three months later, average gain of 6.2%. In other words, people like to try to buy the dips, right? We realize that as long-term investors, we don't get these opportunities every day to buy 20% down or even maybe a little bit more. And so uh, people get excited about that. Also, historically, that once once the economy's labeled a recession, remember that's a lagging indicator. So we find out that it's a recession well after we already probably know that it is because we get the GDP numbers, uh, I think in July now. So if we get labeled a recession in July, uh, it's a lagging indicator. And historically, when the stock market is labeled in a recession, the worst is already over for the stock market, maybe not the economy. Uh, and so people know that. That's not a new stat or anything like that. Uh, but that's what that's what people expect. And so they're like, all right, cool. I want to be a part of this. Now, if we look a little bit further here, what I'm going to do is actually look at um, all the bear market declines to see how bad were they, right? Worst bear market declines of all of them. All right, so here we go. Here's what it looks like. We did every single bear market as far back as we can go. And we said, okay, uh, let's take a look and see what's uh, what happened going forward there, right? So 1946, only 8% uh, lower. We fell 20% throughout that case, but we were traced off of the lows there. The average bear market decline is 31.99%. So that means that sitting here at 21, 22% at the moment, there, that means that the average would be a little bit lower. Now, do, here's one thing I want to point out. I don't share stats with you to say that the stats mean this is going to happen. So we use stats to see if something is odd or if it's just kind of normal, right? It's not fun. It's certainly painful. But if the average bear market ultimately hits 31.99% lower before finding any support or anything, then anything under that would be, all right, not as bad, right? It's better than average, meaning it's uh, not as horrible as people predicted. Everybody says, wow, this time's different, Dustin. This one's going to be different. Well, if we fall more than 32%, let's say, then yeah, it's odd. This is something worse than normal, right? So that tells you also that we have room for the market to continue moving lower, and there's every opportunity for it to do that. But we're not using these stats to say that's the actual statistical results, and therefore, this is what we expect to happen, right? No, don't, don't use it that way or you drive yourself crazy. But anyways, uh, average decline, 31.99%. We're sitting at basically 21.9%. So we've got room for another 10%. Um, I think a lot of you are expecting that to happen. I've been uh, following up on the comments and stuff there. Very, very interesting there. Anyways, a uh, little bit of rambling there. The NASDAQ actually finished positive on the day. It's down about 30% year to date. What's funny is over the last 30 days, about a third of the entire declines came in the last 30 days. That's how fast this thing is moving here. Uh, so don't let the S&P get all the attention when you're looking at declines here. Do you like 20% down in the S&P? And you're saying, I saw some comments earlier. I'm buying. I like buying here. Well, if you like that, look at the NASDAQ as well. Tech stocks are very, very hated right now, especially with interest rates. And the belief is that I'm not paying for that valuation with rates going higher. But at 30% down, would you pay for that now slightly lower valuation? Mm -hmm. Maybe you'll pay for growth at a reasonable cost, but you're not going to pay up for growth. Kind of like the housing market right now, right? Anyways, uh, so that's what's going on there. Uh, I'll uh, brief look around here. You got the Dow uh, also hitting new lows today, but closing just off of them. Uh, down about a half percent on the day. Uh, not too much going on there. The Russell 2000 comes in third place for the worst performer year to date so far. But same thing, bit of a tug of war. I don't need to expand on it. We don't need to review stocks or anything. Just kind of a mixed bag there. Uh, if you look at gold, down 1% on the day, continuing to roll over there. Bonds, I mentioned a minute ago, hit new lows. That means interest rates hit new highs. I'll talk about more of that in just a minute. Got a little relief in oil. I mean, it's little, right? Down 1%. Energy stocks have been pulling back here, which is very good. They're very, 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 very extended there. Uh, so moving along, hopefully nicely, and we can continue that. That'd be great. Uh, Bitcoin uh, had a rough go all the way almost back down to 20,000. Continuing to sell off today, it's down 5% there. Remember, this is how Bitcoin works. Just think about this for a second. During the pandemic, 
and a little bit before, everybody had extra money. Bitcoin is full of extra money. So when people now find I can't get this extra money as easy as I used to be, and, it, and going forward, it's expected that I won't be able to get easy money. Uh, so I need to borrow money. I need money. My life is moving forward. I got to get it. Where's it going to come from? It's going to come from the place that you put the extra money, which is Bitcoin. There's not a lot of people that say, I'm committing heavily, like you do your retirement accounts, like you do other accounts, and you're not going to touch the money. So if things get worse for the economy and for the stock market, people are going to take from Bitcoin investments first. They're not going to take from their 401k or their IRA and, and then just sit there and let their Bitcoin go, right? That's the money's coming out of there. That's what you have happening right now is people going, I don't like this. This is scaring me. This was fun uh, while it lasted. I'm getting out and they're taking that money out. That's a lot of selling pressure. There's no other fundamental or technical argument you can make for Bitcoin because it's a theoretical position, right? It's, it's not it's not real, so it gets sold first. Anyways, just want to point that out. Uh, China stocks, we talked about this yesterday. They continued their breakout today. They did quite well if you're looking around the globe. Uh, now, remember, I pointed out the three that were the best ones yesterday, but uh, take a look today. Uh, well, first I was showing FXI, just showing that breaking out of that downtrend, you got your first higher low. But if you look at Alibaba, also participating as it has been, Pin Duo Duo, and Lee, the best performers yesterday and which have been the best performers continue to be the best performers today even on a day when the market in china continued higher right so everybody's recognized those three names as being strong and look at they're the better performers out of the group they're up 10 percent uh, i will point out that other stocks did well today just not quite as well all right uh mortgage rates Woo! we're above six percent what 6.3 Who's got the latest rates there? I can't even keep up with that data, data anymore. Uh, the Over 6% puts you right around 2006 and 7 and 8. That's right where we were. Mortgage rates were chopping around for a bit there. And uh, that's the last time you saw this. It, what's interesting from a financial advisor perspective, if we assume that house prices don't change, right? So interest rates took off. But house prices haven't really fallen yet. So if we assume that house prices don't change, that means that your mortgage payment, if you're going to go buy a house, is 50% higher than it was just a couple months ago. 50%. Your payment, your mortgage payment. So really crazy there. And if these rates hold through the rest of the summer and assuming home prices don't fall, that means your uh, mortgage payment would be 63% higher than it was just at the beginning of the year. So when you make the argument, uh, Dave Ramsey made the argument that this is the best time ever to buy a house, you got to be careful there, I think. that That's a difficult one to make. And also, you got to remember Dave Ramsey, uh, he has a program that you, advisors can sign up for, realtors can sign up for, accountants can sign up for, and you pay him a lot of money. Financial advisors would pay him over $1,000 a month to get leads from Dave Ramsey. Well, realtors do the same. And so, uh, of course, he's going to be positive on the markets there. He's getting paid, think of that, $1,000 a month to sign up for that ELP program that he has. So I think that's a maybe a little bit conflicting information there. And also, if your mortgage payment is going to be 63% higher than it was just the beginning of the year, are you going to pay top dollar for a house? Pro probably not, right? Probably not. We just saw the other day, wages are not going up, they're going down. Uh, so yeah, I hope that changes, but but uh, that's, that's what we got for now. New highs and lows are not there either. Uh, some kind of technical difficulty there, but I got them for you. Don't worry. C.H. Uh, Robinson, uh, that was one of the new highs on the day. Uh, broke to new highs, uh, ultimately in, pulled back and finished lower on the day. C.H. Uh, Robinson is... Um, fielding a potential offer from a Finnish company, I believe. And that news hit. That's where the volume spiked. Everything was exciting there. Uh, you got, you, oh, wrong place over here. Universal Health. There you go. Uh, that broke to new lows. There was 146 new lows. C.H. Robinson was the only new high. 146 new lows there. So the new lows list continues to be rather scary. Uh, anyways, uh, Universal Health, uh, breaking the new lows, very extended there, almost back to $100. I want to put Royal Caribbean back on a list as well, because this is super extended. It's one of the most extended stocks in the short term in the S&P 500. I don't know that it's a bottom, but if you like that, what, it's like, what else do you have? What it, You can't assume that the market's done going lower, so you can't buy stocks that have pulled back. 
You can only look at stocks that are super extended, that are overdone to the downside, which makes it a little bit difficult there. Uh, but anyways, uh, HCA breaking through the 200 day, uh, $200 mark there. And then uh, you got Health Peak Properties. This is also one of the more extended stocks in the S&P, uh, towards the top of the list anyways. Down another 2.5% today. It does not like to be this extended. So I'm pointing out those stocks because if you have to go shopping, you don't want to go shopping for the stock that's just floundering around. You, you want something that's extended. All right, uh, stocks in the news. Uh, Going to need you there as well. Uh, stocks in the news. First up, let's see how this platform likes it. Hey, no, I think it's a slash. There you go. Brown Foreman. This is actually not new news, but uh, Brown Foreman, uh, they make uh, bottled alcoholic drinks and a couple other things as well. Uh, do you like Jack and Coke? Jack Daniels and, and Coca-Cola? So... Uh, Jack Daniels and Coca-Cola is now going to be in a can. And initially you're like, oh, yeah, it's fine, whatever. What a horrible idea. I'm, maybe I'm wrong on this. It's going to be a half percent alcohol and uh, they're going to be a sugar-free option and there's going to be the regular option as well. Uh, but they're going to start in Mexico through now, through the end of the year, even though the design they showed was in English. Uh, and then they'll see how it goes from there. I don't see that going well. Do you? I I'm curious to know what you guys think there because I looked at that and I'm like, okay, that doesn't really matter to me, but like, are you going to buy that? It doesn't seem like something you would drink out of a can. I don't know. I think that's a failure there myself. But that's what's in the news there for them. Uh, let's go back over here. Uh, Coinbase surprisingly didn't sell off all that much today. Uh, reducing their workforce, stopping hiring, firing people, all this stuff. They're going to uh, basically bring things down by about a fifth of their entire uh, uh, staff. So I'm surprised it didn't sell off a little more. Uh, Oracle, this is uh, earnings related, up 10% on the day. If you look at Oracle, they happen to beat on earnings, raise their guidance going forward. I find Oracle's earnings a little bit boring myself. Uh, one thing that I did look through was that Cerner acquisition. Remember, they bought CERN. That's why it looks like that. Um, they, they said that uh, shareholders are probably undervaluing that acquisition because they're going to start making money right away, even despite the cost of acquiring them. So that's pretty cool when you can see something like that. You acquire a company and you're going to start making a profit right away. That's probably why the stock was up so much on the day. Uh, Cody. Cody is, uh, these guys make makeup and, uh, and things like that. They, they had a conference uh, with, um, oh, Deutsche Bank. Uh, and uh, they basically said, hey, guidance is great going forward. Everything that we told you was going to happen, we expect it to happen going forward. Not anything better, uh, but that's where they stay in there. That's good for them. Uh, and then you got... Uh, uh, Continental Resources, uh, ticker symbol CLR, uh, sharp move to new highs here today. They are possibly going private. Uh, so, or I think it's a, basically a done deal. Yeah, so that one was in the news. Other than that, there's not a lot because the Fed's coming up tomorrow. So I didn't, I didn't need to make this like a, uh, some long drawn out uh, class here today. I will tell you that last week we talked about Campbell Soup's earning, earnings. And we talked about the Old Bay uh, goldfish. Guess what? Old Bay goldfish. That's what they look like. We had to order them. Huh? So these sold out. Uh, Campbell Soup put them up for sale. Oh, maybe this way. So they put them up for sale and they sold out in nine hours. They sold like nine or 10 million of these bags. So this bag was a little bit more expensive. Right, Cody? Is it? It was a little more expensive than you would probably pay for a bag. I have not tried them yet. So while we let the uh, stream catch up and I'll take your questions here, I promise not to chew in your ear. I have not tried them yet, but are these Old Bay goldfish everything that they are? Oh, they smell great. Oh, man. That's Old Bay right there. Wow. That is tasty. A little kick to them. Wow. Is it a go out and, and everybody should buy them? I don't know. I don't know. Compared to regular goldfish? I'm going, I'm, I'm going to say six out of 10 or something. It gets, it gets an extra point because it's, it's different. But what's weird is I put Old Bay on fish, right? So, uh, you know, you go. You, I'm, I'm now picturing like a day fishing, and I'm you now just got my fish already. I'm, I'm back at home. I don't know. I don't know. Woo. Anyways, 
it's like it, Matt's kind of got the right idea there. <laughs> it, uh, you can't have them on their own. But anyways, let's see what questions they have there. Um, Cause that's not bad, but not amazing. Anyways, um, if the FOMC does do a 0.75% uh, rate hike, how does the market? So I'm, I'm torn on that one because I, I kind of assumed that the market was starting to price in that the Fed may overshoot, tighten up too much, and we get this yin-yang effect or this uh, seesaw effect in the, st in the market and the economy. Um, now it's like everybody's on board with it. Like, yeah, raise rates. Go ahead, do what you got to do. Um, I, I just don't kind of think it would be a good thing for the market because I think people would worry that, all right, we're essentially there, right? We're almost beyond neutral now, which is what you guys wanted to do, which means there's only a quarter point hike left, right? I think there'd be only a quarter point hike left for the rest of the year to get them where they wanted to be. Anything beyond that um, is, is not what they talked about, which means it gives the perception of, oh, you're losing control. You don't want that. So... Um, We'll see. Uh, oh, sorry if I missed your questions there. Uh, Tark, was there a question about that one? I have not seen this one. I, so I won't look at an IPO anyways um, or any new symbol, whether it's a spinoff or anything like that. Oh, this uh, I see what you're doing. No, no. I wouldn't do this. Is this leveraged? Not for me. Um, yeah, it is a leveraged ETF. There, it's not. It's for trading. It's not for uh, buy and hold. Yeah. Uh, you got Apple holding today. Any thoughts on Apple over the next six months? Well, I think I actually do one better for you. Uh -huh. There you go. Uh, so we're coming out of the uh, Apple Developer Conference there. Six months after the Developer Conference, uh, this is the data we would use. It uh, tends to be positive. Double-digit gains after that. The best uh, sort of approach would be within that three-month period. But um, yeah, you'd have to say you're generally positive on Apple. Um, and then if you look even further down at the price of Apple, definitely extended. You got a nice pullback here. And what, do you, what, would, what would anybody be scared of if they're looking to buy a dip on Apple? I don't think they'd be scared of much. So I, I would agree with your Apple decision there. Yeah. Chris says, uh, what would you pair with that old Bay goldfish? I'm going to go Buffalo Trace. I was going to say Basil Hayden because you got a little spice there. You got a little sweeter in the bait. I'm going to go Buffalo Trace. Kick it. Just hit it. So that that's my answer. Yeah. <laughs> Um, hey, uh, are there any stats for averaging into the VOO the day the Fed raises rates? Recommend I uh, wouldn't have done the VOO. We've done the SPY mm -hmm. in the past. Um, so historically, when the Fed raises rates on any time they raise rates, uh, the market actually sees that as slightly favorable. So the performance is slightly uh, positive. And then as the meeting starts, uh, which will be 2 o'clock, uh, 2.30 tomorrow, as the actual... Um, conference starts, um, the market sees a slight rally into the close. It's very minimal, though. I, I don't have the data in front of me, but I was reading through it. So it's perceived as slightly um, uh, bullish. Yeah. Oh, Kirk, Kirk was talking more like some other snack. <laughs> I went right for the alcohol, Kirk was saying. Not, no, man, I mean, like, put a little jam on there? What you doing? Hmm. Uh, utilities, yeah, taking a little hard today uh, because of that. Uh, they're the worst performing sector on the day. Same with uh, consumer staples. Uh, that was the second worst performing sector there um, on the news. Now on the actual event, I don't think you see it continue to push lower. I think all that's just priced in there. So no worries going forward. Yeah. What's the difference between a bear market and a market crash? Uh, well, a crash is sort of loosely defined. Um, I've seen some of the younger kids say like a 2% drop in the market on one day is a crash. Uh, no. Uh, bear market would actually be 20% down, right, from the previous high. And that's where we're at at the moment. A crash would be anything over 30% if you're looking on a, uh, if you're a technical trader. So people like to use that. 
Uh, but you would also hear them say, like May 10th, or, um, uh, May 10th, 2010, the flash crash, right? Any wild move that's way outside the norm in one particular day, week, month, whatever, you could, you could call that a crash too. Yeah. Uh, Kevin's got meta. You're overweighted on meta, so you got your new ticker symbol there. No longer saying Facebook. Um, and so think about this. The, when the market starts to recover, what's going to go first? It's going to be that. Right? It's going to be your big tech stocks. So having that is not a bad thing because you want to participate on the rally, right? So you can't get all scared here and say, oh, I don't like the stock market. I'm going to run to consumer staples. You will not recover as fast as the stock market. You've got to have tech in there. It's just really painful at the moment to do that. So I don't disagree with that at all. Kathy, I don't, I don't follow Kathy Woods much. I, I don't know where she came from. I, I'm not sure, like how, um, instant credibility she got there. That something's going on there. I'm, I'll be that guy that says that's a little shady. Somebody decided she was going to be lifted to the top of the pedestals there, and uh, the powers that be did that. Yeah. Uh, Tim's all in on the way down, 100% of your contributions going there. You love buying on the way down. Yeah, there you go. So, because uh, what else is there? Right? When the market's going up, you don't have to do any work at all. The fund's had on the way down, baby. Yeah. Uh, do investment firms like BlackRock, T. Rowe Price, et cetera, get hurt on market downfalls because AUM is lower? Uh, we look more at... Uh, you might find that, yeah, you might find that they're... Uh, Wealth management fees are a little bit lower, uh, but it depends because they don't just charge on AUM at the big firms. They charge for holding positions as well, and so they're making their money. Um, we don't do that here, so for someone like us, it'd be like, all right, we'll make less if the market falls. That's why we're not falling as much as the market, many of you may have noticed, because I ain't about to have that. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be... Are you calling her Crashy Woods? <laughs> Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, all right, cool. Uh, so I'm going to wrap it up there. Uh, the consensus is if you see Old Bay Goldfish on the shelf at your store, you know, give it a shot, you know, but uh, no need to go out of your way and, and order them through the mail and do all of that. So we'll consider that a write-off, uh, prop budget write-off there. Mm. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. I'm feeling pretty good, actually. So tomorrow, I'll hopefully be back to 100% and uh, ready to roll. Enjoy. It's hot. I did not.